Hello, everyone. I Kip Horvath. Hi, Paul Wolf. Linda Clark. Hello, Robin Allen. Hello, Joan Riggs. How are you? Norma Bentley. Good morning. Hi, Barry and Margot. Everybody's jumping in here. Nancy Horvath, Judy Martin. Good morning. Hi, Sandy Sauerbach. Hi, Corey Lockridge. Hi, Linda Wolf. T. Crutz. Don. Don Jones. Good morning. Hi, Patty Johnson. And hi, Ken Woods. Aunt Mary. Good to see you. So it is uh, Monday, and it is the 10th of May. I have um, um, Steve Stapleton's just private funeral, just for the family, uh, is here at the church. Um, and um, but we are gonna. So our prayers go to the Stapleton family on this day. But um, we are also going to broadcast that service. So if you want to um, um, watch, you can see it on our Facebook Live page or on our YouTube channel. Um, and of course, it'll be available for watching after that. So, hi, John Clark, Joanne Butters, Amy Bowerman, Larry and Carolyn Thomas. Um, so that's coming in. So I have to move along a little bit today here. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to cut it short, but um, just have a lot to to get done. Um, they're going to. It's the funeral is at 11:30. So, but the family is going to be here about 10:15 or so. So, um, so we are going to. Uh, so I need to. I need to finish up here in, in a fairly quick time frame. I hope you understand. All right. So we'll go and we're going to do our lectionary. We'll jump right into our lectionary readings, and um, we're going to read Psalm 97 as our opening psalm. It's a psalm, psalm of jubilation, really. So let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles, the mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast and worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, are, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. May God add his blessing to this reading, his holy word. And um, we're going to read out of Deuteronomy. So um, you remember from Sunday school, we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy, do, duo two so it's really the second telling of a lot of the exodus um it's set up so that it happens um it's um moses telling the people uh after 40 years of wandering uh what's the most important before they go across the river jordan now moses himself doesn't make that trip right it's left to joshua to take them across but um this is out of eight chapter verse one through ten and this is um, a retelling of the most important things that they've learned about being God's people in this time of wandering. Let's listen for this, for the word of the Lord. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on, on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, 
than by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in the valleys and hills, a land where wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is the covenant. This is the living out of the covenant that uh, was given to Abraham uh, so long, a long time before Moses, the time of Moses. That, uh, that the people of God in Israel would have um, land and they would have progeny, children. So, and also we hear and hear that um, during the temptations that we read about in Matthew, um, you know, uh, the devil in one of his temptations of Christ says, hey, look, you know, I'll, I'll make these stones, you know, into bread, uh, you can feed the world. And he says, and he responds by quoting right out of this Deuteronomy. Man does not live by bread alone, but instead on from every word from God. Okay, uh, we'll move into our New Testament. We're in the book of James. James, and it's the very first part, James chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. Interesting thing about James is that um, one, of the, uh, one of the chief cornerstones of the Protestant um, faith is Martin Luther back in like 1510 and, uh, and of course he had he was a Catholic priest himself but he objected to uh, many of the practices that had developed within the Catholic Church and so he was trying to reform it that's where we get the Reformation and um, so um, of course the Lutheran Church is a strong follower of the theology of Luther um, the Presbyterian Church uh, kind of follows somebody that goes a little bit after him, not much, maybe like five or six years after him, maybe ten at the most, um, and that was John Calvin. He was in Geneva, which was a city-state. So both of them were successful because they had protection. They had protection of the princes in their area. And, uh, so uh, there was other people that tried to reform before that, but um, they were they were extinguished because the emperor and the church were hand in hand at that point. So it was only when they got rebel princes that uh, were willing to protect them that, that these things came forward. So anyway, but the reason why I'm telling you this is that Martin Luther absolutely hated the book of James. He called it the epistle, which means letter, the epistle of straw, meaning that it was nothing. And, and the reason for that is because as you read through this, it, there, it gives the appearance that um, that that your salvation right is earned through what you do so it's called works salvation it's not really there right but it had been in the time of luther um, it had been corrupted uh, so that that's what was taught about it and martin luther was saying look uh, your salvation is simply an act of grace from God. You can't do anything to earn it. So that's why he disliked this, this uh, book of James. But we'll, let's listen to it for ourselves. James chapter 1, verse 1 through 15. So we're going to get the introduction to the letter. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Um, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. 
If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives all to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of a sea driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field, its flowers fall, and its beauty perishes. In the same, It is the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. See, if we just tossed out this letter, we wouldn't get this great teaching that we have. Like, And right here, it talks about temptation and how the fact that that's not from God, right? But it's from within ourselves. It's, um, it's when we're not satisfied um, uh, or trusting enough in God that um, we start to see things and yearn and um, and we're willing to cut corners sometimes to get that right and then that's the temptation so um it's really that desire and and satan when we say satan um the hebrew word that means the great tempter right so that's how that's how um brokenness from god happens with temptations and that temptation is from within ourselves that's such a great teaching from the from the book of james all right, uh, we're going to go into our gospel reading. This is Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. Once when Jesus was praying alone, with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient pro uh, prophets has arisen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, Ah, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. But truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is Luke's um, things. We're, we're probably a little bit more familiar with Matthews, right? Um, Jesus um, asked, you know, who, who do they say they am? And, he, and the two gospels are congruent and says the same things. But in Matthews, we hear him say, um, he gets really praised. And this is where he gives, he says, to you, I give the keys to the kingdom, which is where uh, that was to Peter. That's where we get Peter was the first Pope um, because he was in, put in charge through, and it was simply that verse that, um, that, that delivers that. Um, so after he's provided the right answers, and there he goes, he says, you are the Messiah, you are the son of the living God. And um, he says, oh, how excellent you are, you know, Peter. You are the rock, you know, of which I will be, build my church. Um, but then when he talks about what's going to happen here, saying, hey, look, you know, the Son of Man is under, going to undergo great sufferings, rejection, right, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. He's talking about the events of Easter, and, and um, he just can't hear that, you know. And so he's, good Lord, no, we're not going to let this happen to you. We're going to stop this from happening. And um, 
Peter turns around and looks at him. Jesus turns around and looks at Peter and says, get behind me, Satan, right? Um, so it's saying, you know, it's, hey, you know, who are you to stand in the way of what God has ordained is going to happen? And, that's, and he rebukes them strongly. So just literally within a matter of minutes, he goes from praising him to rebuking him. So that's how we can get it wrong sometimes, right? We need to be really careful with that. All right, so there we go. Go back over here. Hi, Doug Goddard. Hey, Doug, I got your message, and I will give you a call back. All right, I'm just a little busy today, but I'll, I'll give you a call. All right. Hi, Barbara Shoot. Well, Victoria Miller, we will certainly pray for you. And uh, friends, will, if, she, if Victoria needs help, uh, she can get in contact with us. She can send me a Facebook message and see, see what we can do, okay? All right. Hello, Ellen. All right, so it's 9.15, so we're going to pray right now. Let's pray for Victoria, too. All right. Lord, uh, we gather here today. We've heard your word, and uh, we thank you for allowing us to open our morning together. Lord, for the fact that uh, this will be available throughout the day for others to uh, take a pause during their day to be refreshed or to give thanks at the end of their day. We thank you for this, uh, this group of people. So, um, Lord, um, we need to pray for the Stapleton family. Give them strength and hope right in the resurrection on this day as uh, they gather to uh, say goodbye to their beloved husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle. And then, Lord, uh, we've heard that uh, Victoria is in uh, some problems. And, Lord, we would pray that uh, you would lead people to her, that she can be helping Certainly, Christ uh, can be of, a, of assistance in this time. So, Lord, um, there's a lot of things that give us great concern, but we also need to be thankful for the things that we do have in front of us. So, Lord, we ask for your blessings. We ask for your peace. We just ask that um, that we not that we not yearn for things that are outside of what we really need, but that we know that uh, we're beloved by you. That you will satisfy all the things that we truly need. And we pray all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. So good to be with you. And we've got a lot of people with us today. So I was able to do this in 16 minutes. And we're usually a little bit longer than that. And I apologize, but I do have I do have to get uh, moving on some stuff for the, for the funeral that'll be here. And just so remember, if you'd like to watch, it will be on Facebook Live. It will also be on our YouTube channel. And the funeral itself, will, um, this, the feed will begin uh, slightly before 1130. All right. God bless you all. We'll see you. Love you all.